uh, common in folk song uh, regions, where uh, a girl dresses up as a sailor, follows after her boyfriend. There's, there's a load of these songs, and people say, why are there so many of these songs? And I feel it's, it's never struck me as a particularly uh, complicated thing to understand, because if there's any idea that would appeal to a sailor, it's finding out a lot of the crew members didn't seem to have any problem. So I've had a lot of these songs with different endings and different uh, different attributes that the characters possess. The most cynical of these is a song called William Taylor, which uh, has been well sung in the past. I used to sing it a long time ago, and I discovered I didn't particularly like William Taylor or his girlfriend much, so I should grab for another version. And I found one with a Characters retain a degree of dignity. And William Taylor, he's uh, found another port with another woman and she blasts him and has to get her with uh, all sorts of weapons she finds around her disposal. And uh, in this particular one, I know it ends quickly, uh, there's no, um, no infidelity or no, uh, no trouble, there's no viciousness on the part of either party really. Uh, the bloke's maybe a bit simple in the second verse. He reduces the girl's love affair, his love affair as well, to uh, material things, which is uh, strategic error, number one. Was all at that time. 
No thoughts of our ship being wrecked Away we went And from London in one day Then we were cast away Cast away, misfortune it did frown, and I swam to the shore apart. My love was drowned, and now she lies in the deep, in everlasting sleep. Tune which I got from a, a record by a group called Plaxty, who uh, I always liked. They incorporate the Uland pipes as the basis of the group. And if you've never seen them, then they're well worth seeing. You want to make a point of going to see them. I had them on the television recently, which is surprising. Uh, uh, it was Network, I think it was. A band called Network. particular tune, they didn't play on the program, they played it on one of their earlier records and it became a, a tune that played a lot into the Kayla's and Jam sessions now. I think. In. And uh, this one is uh, one of my all time favourites as far as I'm concerned. It's one I heard from the Watersons, they uh, recorded it a long time ago. And uh, it's about a fellow who leaves Westerham and he uh, decides he's going to take Quebec off the French. And he succeeds in doing this, but his, uh, his celebration on his victory is somewhat uh, upset a bit. In fact, he gets killed at the point of victory. So, uh, 
serves him right, really. Trying to take cities that don't belong to him. <laughs> anyway, it's, it's a, a grand song, really. And he remembers his origins at the uh, moment of his death. He's dying in some car or somebody. He's dying all over him or somebody. And uh, Turd says, not forget his, his mum. So... Anyway, the bit you can join in is the, the uh, 50% of line three of every verse. <laughs> and that's always the same as the other 50% of the line. So if you uh, whichever line you hear first, do it again. One Monday morning as we set sail, the wind was a blowing a pleasant gale. To fight the French, it was our intent Through smoke and fire Through smoke and fire And it was a dark and a gloomy night Now the French were landed on mountains high while we poor soldiers in the valley lie cheer up my lads our general wolf did say brave lads of honor brave lads of honor old england she shall win the day Now the very first broadside we gave to them We wounded a hundred and fifty men Well done me lads, our General Wolf did say Brave lads of honour, brave lads of honour shall win the day. Now the very next broadside they gave to us. They wounded our general in his own breast. And from his heart the precious blood did flow like any fountain like any fountain and all of his soldiers hearts were filled with war now he is a hundred guineas all in bright gold take it and part it for my heart's growing cold and use your men like you did before your soldiers all your soldiers all and they will fight for evermore and so it's when to england you do return tell all my friends that i'm dead and gone and tell my tender old mother too that i am dead oh that i am dead oh and never shall see her That winds up dead. This time, uh, I'll do some happy ones in a minute. This time, this guy's uh, a few problems in that he's uh, we've got to check up the ladies. He's turned down three times in an afternoon. Doesn't know his approach, his technique. 
But uh, they're all sisters, apparently. So uh, maybe just chose the wrong family. And Big Brother turns up to save the last one because he kills, decides he's going to kill them all. Takes it so much to heart. <laughs> and uh, he succeeds with two, and he's just about to do the last one in. And uh, Errol Flynn turns up and he's big white charge. Fifty percent of this you can join in. The second line of every verse is O, I, and Sir Bonnie. And the last line is in, near, underneath, through the Bonnie Bonnie Banks of Fordy. Most of the version of this is associated with Scotland. This particular one has got a few American influences because the guy is normally a rank robber, in this version he's a bank robber. <laughs> and the Bonnie Banks of Ford is inhabited by rattlesnakes at the end of the summer. I don't remember seeing any rattlesnakes in Scotland. I better look out of Oh, I am so boring. Oh, will you 
died with metal pen knife on the bonny bonny banks of Pony. When her own brother John come riding by, oh, oh I am so bonny. And this bold a robber he chanced to spy on the bonny bonny banks of Pony. And he's gone up to his sister fair. Oh, I am so bonny. Taking her up by a long yellow hair on the bonny bonny banks of Pony. And he sent out his page boys three. Oh, I am so bonny. To take this robber more speedily on the bonny bonny banks of Sisters, you took me there like, oh, I am so bonny, all with your cruel and your bloody pen knife on the bonny, bonny banks of Cody. And for my sisters, then you shall die, oh, I am so bonny. So they hanged him up on the gallows high on the bonny, bonny banks of Cody. Into a poison lake. Oh, I am so bonny. And feed all the toads and the rattlesnake on the bonny, bonny banks of Bordy. This is a, a song, again, it's very common in uh, folk song 
collections. Not this particular song, but the style of song where there's a, there's a phrase which has a degree of ambiguity about it. And uh, people tend to take it the worst way, I suppose, if they can. But uh, it's quite a simple, quite a open sort of song about a fellow who chats up a lady down by certain areas on a certain May morning. It's always on a May morning. The morning of June. Create someone on morning in December. Anyway, this is, uh, this is a May one. Now. Yeah, it. It's got a chorus which goes, oh, the neat little bunch of rushes, oh, the neat little bunch of rushes, oh. And that's the phrase that takes on different shades of meaning. Oh, as I walked out one morning, abroad as I did walk for sport, down by a pleasant harbour where lovers oft times did resort. Oh, it's there I spied a female to whom my thoughts are gone astray. With a bunch of rushes in her hand that she had gathered by the way. Oh, the neat little bunch of rushes, oh, the neat little bunch of rushes, oh. Neat little bunch of rushes, oh, the neat little bunch of rushes, oh. I notice that the first, first part is about the same as the second part. <laughs> Uh, there is no month at all, just realised that. <laughs> so it could be December. Could be December. <coughs> Except they must have been very cold. <laughs> I quickly stepped up to her, embracing her most manfully. And she kindly did rebuke me And said, kind sir, don't make too free Don't think for to use me Because that I am poor and low Don't break me bunch of rushes But loose me, sir, and let me go Oh, the neat little bunch of rushes, oh, the neat little bunch of rushes, oh. Oh, it's I will not illuse you, nor cause to you any injury. But sit you down beside of me, beneath yon green and spreading tree. And the lovely larks and linnets are witness to our tale of love. And to you I will prove faithful, I swear by all the stars above. Oh, the neat little bunch of rushes, oh, the neat little bunch of rushes, oh. So it's now she has consented, and on to the ground we both sat down. And for fear of any moisture, she spreads beneath her cambric gown. And the lovely larks and linnets are witness till our love was o'er. And she said, kind sir, don't tease me, nor break my bunch of rushes more. Oh, the neat little bunch of rushes, oh, the neat little bunch of rushes, oh. And it's now we are on parting, it's when shall we both meet again? Oh, it's just in a few days after, and then the clock shall say Amen. 
So come all you gentle listeners, if to those arbors you do go, just don't forget the answer to the maiden's bunch of rushes, oh. Oh, the neat little bunch of rushes, oh, the neat little bunch of rushes, oh. <laughs> It's a song with exactly the same tune as the last one, except it's um, in a very different context. So much so that it uh, becomes almost a different tune, but it still uh, there is a very strong resemblance. A song somebody asked me to sing actually. Mm. Uh, king size songs. It's not tremendously long, but it's uh, it's got a lot in it. It's a lot to uh, there's a lot to watch out for. It's still sort of something you can get lost in when you're singing. So people chuck things I don't usually notice. Yeah. Some songs you can uh, completely immerse yourself in. Some you can't. This one takes us on a round trip of Europe, really, and uh, with a fellow called Napoleon Bonaparte, who the BBC have chiming up, make out to be the uh, Rudolf Valentino of the uh, French nation. And personally, I always thought, uh, always thought history was very boring, but, and most of the people in it are very boring. But what is interesting is what's made of them like, afterwards. I mean, he, probably the classic example, someone like, say, Jesus, is probably a very boring person, but what, they, what people have made of him is much more interesting because he becomes a superman, a magician, with all sorts of miracles and things like that. She's much more interested than just being an ordinary old prophet. <laughs> And you get people like well, Robin Hood is another example, someone who does uh, amazing things and King Arthur's knights and all this, they become legendary characters that do a load of things that they probably never ever did. And to some extent this, this song is a creation of a myth, part of, part of it, makes him out to be a great person. conversation really between the Napoleon's son and Napoleon's wife. Tremendous danger go, and 
in spite of all the universe, I'll conquer the bonny bunch of roses oh. And when first you saw Napoleon, you fell down on your bended knee, and you asked your father's life of him, and he's granted it most manfully. Oh, twas then he took an army. And all the frozen Alps did go, and he said, I'll conquer Moscow, and come back for the bonny bunch of roses all. Well, he took three hundred thousand fighting. Likewise to join his throne, he was so well provided for, enough to take the whole world along. Ah, but when he came to Moscow, all overpowered. And snow and Moscow was a blazing, and he's lost the bonny bunch of roses. Oh, oh my son, don't speak so venturesome. For England, she has a heart of all. And England, and Ireland, and Scotland, their unity has never been broke. And so, my son, think on your father in St. Helena. It lies low, and you will follow after. And so beware of the bonny bunch of roses, oh. And it's goodbye out to my mother. might have been clever Now I bow my youthful head And it's while our bodies do moulder And weeping willows over us do grow Oh, the deeds of brave Napoleon The bonny bunch of roses all by the margin of the ocean. One pleasant evening in the month of June, the pleasant singing black. Oh, all in great grief 
even wore. She was conversing with young Bonaparte concerning the bonny bunch of roses. fellow who uh, commits some very small trivial crime and he gets sent to Australia for seven years which at that time was uh, in the, the 19th century it wasn't uh, wasn't so much of a holiday now they actually pay you to go there it was just kind of send you there. And he serves a seven year sentence, um, six years he serves, and he's using the journey back as the last, for the last year. And he gets shipwrecked on an island, which in fact is, uh, in the song it's called the Isle of France, but uh, apparently it's Mauritius in the Indian Ocean. So uh, the Coast Guard crops up, gives him some brandy, revives him, saves his life, and um, Saves his life and writes a very polite letter to Queen Victoria and asks him for this guy's freedom. Some brandy, he 
hear the convicts hearts All though the night is far advanced You shall find a friend on the Isle of France So we sent a letter the coast guard this convict cried for he saved my life from the ocean wide and I'll drink his health in a flowing Here's a song which uh, another fellow has trouble with the, uh, with the sea, with the briny ocean. He gets hurled into it off a ship. And uh, this one's uh, more light hearted, really. Uh, it's about a character that you all have heard of, except his name has been changed in this. What was I saying? It's got a core, it's got five words that you can join at the end of each verse, which just go caterwauling, tarpaulin, harpooning, and all. Whatever sense you can make of that. You've got this old piece called Leviathan, which is well worth two quid of anybody's money. Lead singers Bert Lloyd, various uh, backup musicians. That's one of the songs from it. It's all songs about the whaling industry, this particular record. Paddy Maloney left Ireland in glee He had a strange notion to sail the broad sea He shipped on a whale catcher, boys, Georgia bound And the whale that she fished made his head go around Catawallin, tarpaulin, harpooning and all Well, Paddy had never been sailing before and it made his heart beat when he heard a loud roar there's a whale a man at the masthead did cry but god says poor patty i'll be yet by and by caterwauling tarpaulin harpooning and all well patty he went and forward and he reached for the mast caught hold of a gripper and there he held fast the boat gave a tip, and poor Pad lost his grip, and into the whale's belly the silly fool slipped, caterwauling, tarpaulin, harpooning, and all. Well, he was in that whale's belly six months and a day, and one morning by chance to his throat he made away. The whale gave a hoosh boys, and then she did blow, and the mile in the air went old Paddy Maloney, caterwauling, tarpaulin, harpooning, and all. Well, Paddy 
he got landed quite safe on the shore, and he swears he'll not go to sea any more. And the next time he follows such a venture, sub notion, it'll be when the railway runs over the ocean, can a warrant up pulling up in and sang Barker Hill earlier, mentioned in that song, to a tuner Elsie Marley. I didn't realise what the tune was until I heard the uh, High Level Renters played it. Another tune actually, which is uh, called Plankstie Davis, which is a tune I first heard a group of the Exiles do. Uh, I sing his song right on the main page as well. <laughs> a really good group they were. There was uh, a really good singer in the group called Enoch Kent, and he uh, he was a remarkable tone to his voice, mainly because of an uh, operation he had on his nose. <laughs> uh, but it's never ceased to amaze me the amount of uh, the folk scene is littered with people with distinctive voices who have all had trouble with their hooters. <laughs> all, all sort of singers that everybody sort of tends to copy, like sort of uh, Louis Killen, Martin Carthy, Mike Watts and Enoch Kent, and all, all had trouble with sinus trouble or the trouble I'm going to punch them. I'm not asking for anybody to <laughs> fix my physiognomy. <laughs> this is a tune anyway that uh, the group played.
And it was written uh, apparently by a lady who uh, seemed to have a preference for plowman lads. So the song goes. Just goes to sing, uh, sing laddie eye, sing laddie eye, the plowman lads there all ago. Just tell me what it is from Dean's point of view, but it's a, it's a simple but I uh, think it's a rather nice melody. <laughs>
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a song. Um, it's an article. <laughs> well, a fellow comes across from Philadelphia, meets a young lady on the banks of a river, and uh, has a chats her up very rapidly, gets the permission of her father, marries her, and everything ends happily ever after. A rare occurrence. Same as the title, which is the, the green mossy banks of the Lee, and that crops up every now and then, uh, usually as the last line of some of the verses. So we go in. Castle in grand 
grandeur and splendor to shine. So now this American stranger, all pastime and leisure, he can see, he can live with his gentle young. The green mossy banks of the living. So it's all you, young women, attention. No matter how poor you may be, just you think on that gentle young woman. On the green mossy banks of the lake. When first in this country a stranger Curiosity caused me to roll Over Europe I resolved to be This is about, uh, this one, a couple of people asked me this thing is. It's about a fellow who uh, has a few problems with his girlfriend. He's, uh, he's not really trust her, basically. And uh, he has a bit of an omen that says that maybe she, um, she isn't being all she should be. So he follows after her and uh, arrives at her place. And the girl's mother causes a few problems by telling him a fib. And he goes and chats himself in the river as a result of this. And the girl wakes up at this point. She's dreamed this particular sequence and she wants to know where her boyfriend is. And this uh, innocent question causes even more trouble. to bleed. Give corn unto my horse mother and meat to my man John. And I'll away to fair Margaret's bower before the night comes on. Oh, stay at home with me, dear Willie. Oh, stay at home with me. Or in the deepest part of Clyde Water, you shall drown it be. Oh, the good steed that I ride upon cost me thrice thirty pounds. I'll put trust in his swift feet to take me safe and sound. He is ridden o'er high, high hill and down yonder we den. And the 
rushing in the Clyde water would have feared five hundred men. Oh, roaring Clyde, you roar so loud, your streams are wondrous strong. Make me a wreck as I come back and spare me as I'm gone. To Margaret's bower, he's to blow on the pin. Saying, Rise up, me good Margaret, rise up and let me in. Oh, who is this at me bower door calling me Margaret's name? Oh, it's only your first love, little William, this night come to her home. Open up me castle gates, open and let me in. But my boots and they're full of the Clyde water And I'm frozen to the skin All my barns are full of corn middly The stable's full of hay And my bowers are full of gentlemen They're not removed till day Then it's fare thee well to your May Margaret And it's fare thee well and adieu For I have won my mother's own curse In coming this night to you so he is ridden o'er high, high hill and down yon dowie den, and the rushing in the Clyde water took away his hat from him. And he's leaning over his saddle bow to catch his hat again, and the rushing in the Clyde water took away his cane from him. He's leaned him over his saddle bow to catch his cane by force, and the rushing in the Clyde water took a willy from his horse. And the very hour that a young man sank into the part so deep, then up and awoke this May Margaret out from her drowsy sleep. Come here, come here, my mother dear, read me dreary dream. Oh, I dream me love was at our gates and nobody let him in. It's but two quarters past Then nimbly, nimbly rose she up And went down to the river's brim And the louder that this lady cried The louder grew the wind And the very first step that she went in She's waded to her feet And oh, and the last this lady says The waters are wondrous deep and the very next step that she went in, she's waded to her knee. Says she would wade farther in if I, my true lover, could see. And the very last step that she went in, she's waded to her chin. In the deepest part of Clyde Water, she found sweet William in. Oh, you have had a cruel mother, Willie, and I have had another. and like brother
suppose one's got a common duke called the, uh, the Blackthorns. Yeah. 